Hello! In this episode I'm going to be showing you the rig that I used to animate the cogs in the um, cog world animation, um, sorry, mechanical garden, that was it. If I scrub through, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see it with this playback, but I've got all these um, cogs animating in unison, all nicely interlinked and moving at the correct rotation speeds. So I'm going to be showing you the rig setup that I used to allow me to do this very quickly and efficiently. If you've not seen the animation for this already, I'd recommend checking it out just so you have a better idea of what I'm going to be talking about. Because I don't think that playback did you any justice whatsoever. Um, so yeah, what this rig does is, it does a seamless animation of this cog rotating every second. Now I'm at 25 frames per second and I've set the timeline to 24. That's because on the 25th frame, which would be the full second, we'd end up doubling up with frame zero because it'd be the identity, the same frame basically. So for each cycle that you do, you want to make sure that you have one frame less than the final second. So if I was to do two seconds instead of 50 frames, I'm going to do 49. That's because if I did 50, you'll know, well, I'm not sure if it'll be too noticeable, but after you watch enough loops, you'll notice on the 50th frame, there'll be a slight jitter. That's because you've included, or you basically doubled up frame zero. So I'm going to set this back down to 49. So you can see we've got this seamless loop. Um, another part of this rig is that we have this global speed control here. So if I create another cog, I'm just going to move it. Ooh, make sure it's in the stack. And I'm just going to place it there for now. So they're not interlinking, they're just two cogs moving at the same speed. If I change the cog speed to 50%, it changes the speed of both of them, so now 50% slower. Now this is really handy when you've got lots of cogs interlinking because if you need to change the speed of one of them, you need to change the speed of all of them. And if you have a cog world like I had before, um, having this speed control parameter is incredibly handy to have. Thankfully it didn't. I didn't need to use it, but if I ended up doing the whole animation and realising, oh, everything's way too fast, I can now dial down that speed to say 50% and then there we go I've adjusted all of the cogs to work at the, the right speeds. So that's the second feature. Now the last one, oh, which is really good, if I were to just adjust this cog wheel, so I'm going to get rid of this centre hole for now and just crank down the amount of teeth. Okay we've gone to the minimum which is 5. And I place this here, so I'm just going to position it somewhere like that. If I place this back, oh, actually, they're spinning at the same rotation. Ignore this for now, it'll make sense later on. But basically what I've just done there is change the direction that this um, cogwheel rotates. If I place this, say, here for now. If I place this back, you can see the smaller one is spinning a lot faster than the larger one. However, they're moving in unison, like they're, they're interlinking and animating at the correct speeds. Now this is what allowed me to make that cog world very quickly because all I needed to do was say how many teeth I wanted the cog to have, position it wherever I wanted it, and then the animation was already predetermined and in place for me. So it made me it made life a lot easier. So I'll explain how all this works. So if I go into here, I'm just going to go into the first one. Actually, I'll delete this. Mm, yeah, I'll delete the second one for now. So what we have is the rig. Now, the first thing we have here is the parent null called cogs with cog speed parameter. Now, this is just basic user data. Um, here we've just got a percentage slider and it's actually the default when you add data. So if I click add data, we've got the exact same settings. So basically just got this data and called it cog speed. And that was basically cog speed parameter. So we got that and we've fed it into the output upper of a range mapper. So I'll cover that in a moment. Time node, what this is doing is basically outputting a value of one every second. So I'm on 25 frames per second, and I've set the marker on the timeline to 25. You can see in this result node, we're getting 1. If I scrub this to 0, 
be 0. If I scrub this to frame 50, it would be 2. So it's basically incrementing by 1 for every second. However, it does have in-between values. Um, so it's basically saying for every 25 frames, because I'm at 25 frames per second, it will output 1. If I change this to 30 frames per second and I was on frame 30, it would output 1. So it's doing it regardless of the document's um, FPS, which is quite handy to have. Now the range mapper, what we're basically doing is, say we're at um, 25 frames. Uh, if we input 0, we'd expect 0% 0 to come out. Okay. If we input 1, which is what we have now, we're expecting 100%. So we're allowing the full values to pass through, basically. Now, we've got this result node here to say how this cog speed affects the time that's being passed in. So if I change this to 50%, what we're basically saying is, at one second, allow 50% of this value to pass through, which in our case would be 0.5. If I change the cog speed to 25%, you should get 0.25 passing through. So this this parameter here is basically acting as a filter to say how much of the time value can pass through. And the more you increase the filter, the slower it gets. So if you set it to zero, none of that value passes through and you get well you don't get any animation. So basically this first part is just literally getting this parameter to impact the time value. Now we've not plugged the time value into anything meaningful yet, it's just we're affecting the time there. So once we've got that time, we feed it into another range mapper. And what this is going to do is convert that time or the value that's coming out of that time and change it or translate it to um, degrees. So we're basically saying for every 25 frames, we want 360 degrees to be output so then, with that, we're going to divide that value, that 360 degrees for every second, we're going to divide that by the amount of teeth that the cog wheel has. So in our case, we're taking 360 degrees, dividing it by 18, and then feeding that into the rotation value. Now this, this last range mapper, doesn't do anything other than change the direction that um, the cog wheel rotates in. If I change that to negative 1, it'll go in the opposite direction. If I set it to 1, it goes the other way. I could use this reverse checkbox. It doesn't matter, really. Either one works. I just had a habit of changing this value here. Um, so I'm going to set this back to the next one. As you can see, every oh, if I set this to 24, every second you can see the axis handles um, snapping back every time a tooth passes. So you can see for every second, one tooth kind of goes past in this rotation for the seamless loop. I don't know if that's really the best way of explaining I don't know if I should bother trying any harder. I mean, you can see what's what it's doing. Um, and if we decrease the amount of teeth, it will still move seamlessly. So if the math didn't make sense, don't worry, because, I mean, as soon as I figured it out, my, my brain shuts off anyway, so I don't blame you. If um, you're struggling as well, just know that basically taking 360 degrees, dividing it by the amount of teeth on the cogwheel. Okay, so the issue that I was um, talking about. Now, if I added some spokes, so we've got four spokes here. It's no longer a seamless animation. The, the outer, um, the teeth are moving seamlessly, but the inside isn't. Now, the math here is basically, oh, I'm, gonna, I'm struggling a bit with this one, I'm trying to remember myself. Basically, you want to take the amount of seconds in your animated loop, so in our case, we've got one. So I'm going to set this to, say, 99. So we've got four seconds now, so it would be one frame less than 100 frames. So it's got four seconds of animation. We basically take the teeth and divide it by four, and that will give us um, the amount of spokes that we can use. So if I set this up to 20, I can have 5 spokes. Because if I do 5 times 4 seconds, we get 20 teeth. Now, let's just play this back and just see if it works. 
Hey, it works. I wasn't 100% faithful then. <laughs> it should have been. I, I had a feeling I messed up the math. But um, yeah, that's basically how it works. Now, if I set this up to, say, 1, 2, 4, so we basically added an extra second. Ah, it's not working. But if I change the spokes down to 4, it's working again. That's because we now have 5 seconds in the timeline times by the amount of spokes, which is 4. So we're doing 5 times 4 again, and we get 20. So that's... Yeah, something to bear in mind. You know, if you're adding spokes to things, it will impact what you can use depending on um, the, the amount of cycles in the animation that you're using. And obviously that can be quite important if you're doing um, looped animations and you want to make sure that you're only rendering a certain amount of frames because if it turns out, oh, you need an extra second or an extra three seconds, extra five, you know, you can end up um, hitting rendering bottlenecks you know if, you, if you're on a tight budget or schedule you know that's nasty to surprise to suddenly have so yeah that's basically the the, the rig that, that was it really and just for the sake of demonstration again just how quick and easy it was so you got one there and then we could change let's get rid of the spokes for this one for now and say 10 Get rid of that inlay, move that over, and say you've got something like this and not quite lining up, you can just go into the, um, the spline underneath and set it like so. And there you go, and you can keep doing that for as, as long as you like, as I did um, with the animation with all these, all these cogs here. So yeah, um, if there's anything else you'd like to know about this little animation let me know um let me know how this rig works out for you if you do try to use it and if you have any any issues again for the third time let me know um yeah otherwise uh hope you have a good day and hope to see you in the next one